and the exact times that they can tune in. So they kind of get a 24-hour heads up of when to chime in to live. And uh, hopefully you guys can hear us okay. If you can't, engage with us. Let us know. Uh, and that's the, the, the coolest thing about uh, this whole thing. So, so why do I want to have Ruth on uh, today? Oh, look, look at how many friends are, are chiming in already. I know, I you know. you got to say their name. Guys, you guys are getting the side view. I can't see your names, otherwise I'd be saying hello. Kristen is joining, a uh, whole bunch of people, but uh, Ruth will respond to every single one of your guys' comments, so chime in and say anything you want or any questions you have, and she'll go through later, because I'm going to show her how when we're done here, um, to answer any one of your guys' questions and, and use her while we have her. So, guys, I've had... Um, my whole goal is, you know, it's not about me. It's not about Ruth. It's about to give, give, give value. And first of all, what was so refreshing is when I called this lady who helped one of my clients. She didn't hesitate. She didn't charge me. She gave me the answer right away, uh, which I felt indebted and grateful to. Thank you for Thank that. You. Uh, let's just do one of those, those proper handshakes all right. for people. <laughs> um, but what, what I want to do is, we, we, you know, we briefly talk about topics, but never do we, you know, Every topic has its own universe, right? Its own science. And what Ruth is here in Milpitas, you can check her out. I'll throw her information out there after. But um, she does many different things. Uh, but one thing that she does is uh, focuses on um, scores and, and, and she's a consultant and helps people. Um, well, maybe I should shut up. Why don't, we, why don't you tell us Ruth, right. maybe, what, what, you, what, you, what you do? Well, what I do is I help people with their credit scores, settling debts, um, you know, removing the late payments, bankruptcies. You can remove anything from your credit report. So we help people do that. I also teach classes to show you how to do it yourself. Um, but the reason I do it is because 10 years ago, I guess now, okay. um, I went through my own financial mess. I uh, had a construction project with a partner. You've been there. We had three homes. And we owned the land, but when we tried to build the homes, the developer couldn't get me to the final draw. I lost everything. Wow. So, <clears throat> been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Had to file bankruptcy, had judgments put on me, got mm -hmm. to sit in the IRS office, mm -hmm. been through it all. So, pretty much I'm teaching people now, you can take me down, but you're not going to take me down for long. I love it. And we're going to show you, even if you know anybody that's starting to struggle, yeah. have them reach out to me because I can tell them. Yes. You know, how to, to get out of it. You know, I had one person that was ready to file bankruptcy, didn't have a late payment yet on their um, on their credit cards. And I said, well, if you file bankruptcy now without the late payments, you're going to come out of a bankruptcy with a high 600 score. And she did. Right. So there's and that's a lot what, of different strategies to it. That's, that you that's just what gotta... yesterday taught me. You know, I was talking to my client and the banker again today is this should humble us that you literally don't know what you literally don't, don't know, know. Exactly. and knowledge is power in that uh way and i won't name my, my client but a uh, client is uh, uh awesome guy makes over 200k and because of one or two late uh auto payments that it, it weren't his fault mm -hmm. he's down in the 600 range he needs a 680 uh score and we went above and beyond right I, i'm big on persistence persistence is everything my mentors always told me that and that's why they came to me because you know what and th that doesn't mean we're, we're doing anything illegal or wrong but there's a the knowledge is out there we have to be humbled by it and we're gonna find a way for you right and if you did all the right things and you know um why don't we get right into that? Uh, like somehow I ended up coming across uh, Fair Credit Reporting Act. And actually the way I came uh, across it, who knows, maybe he'll chime in. He's Facebook friends with me, Ruth. His name is Stuart Diamond. He wrote the book Getting More. Uh, and it's a book on negotiation that they have people like, uh, you know, Google looks at it as, uh, you know, their standard uh, HR book. But essentially, you know, he had a section on real estate. He had a section on credit cards too and how to hold people accountable. Of course, we want to do the best things we can to negotiate. So uh, long story short, as I look into Fair Credit Reporting Act, they have, you know, their Equifax, TransUnion, uh, etc. And there are ways to dispute a process and upload it. But when talking to different bankers, they said, okay, well, I have a credit re repair specialist. I have a credit repair consultant. I keep hearing this more and more. Uh, and, I'm, and I said, I don't need them. I have my persistence and energy for my client. Uh -huh. I, I will upload it and do all that. And these bankers assured me, well, no, well, it's a lot faster. That was ego of me. It's a lot faster if you consult somebody 
you know, who's an expert in this topic, they can uh, help you right away, and they may be able to tell you something that might save you tons of time and energy, yeah, and just go. That's what happened yesterday. And that's what happened <laughs> yesterday. I three-way both these guys, the banker and my client, and I go, you guys aren't gonna believe this. Like, listen to this. And uh, shout out to Jim Myrick. I would have never knew who this lady was or met her if I hadn't gone through her. So 100% credit to uh, um, to him. But, but but anyways, the goal for you guys is I think it's that you know her knowledge is like. 20 to 30 times more valuable so I pushed everything aside in my birthday week and I said oh, I gotta birthday. thank you I gotta get Ruth on because I'm not thinking about myself I'm thinking about you guys and um, can we can we talk Ruth about what you told me uh, on the phone um, for him it was uh, he had that question too was it so we were going to the thing Ruth said to me was uh, uh, you know, if we need to achieve a higher score one way, as long as it's okay with them, um, Adam as an authorized user on somebody who has a good credit history, right. correct? Uh, yes. But he came back to me because, you know, he was on the phone and I'm trying to talk loud to make sure you guys can all hear. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, well, they're asking me authorized user or co-applicant? Authorized user. Authorized user. That was my answer. I said, no, no, no. She said authorized user. Authorized user. And then I went back to a banker and he said, uh, oh, no, 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 co-applicant, which I knew was going to take longer. Uh, so you know who you are if you're listening. My initial answer was right. It was just <laughs> authorized user. Because co-applicant, what do they say to him? We want your uh, if income If you have a poor credit score, they're not going to allow you to be yes. a co-applicant. And, and so it might cause more problems to, to that person. Authorized user. Dang, if I could text that person right now. Uh, but <laughs> I'm... I'm I can literally do that now. Sorry, no, we're we're here for you guys. Uh, but uh, yeah, so let my whole so goal. So you want me to tell the yeah, story? Yeah, yeah. Tell the, I'm sorry. Okay. Tell the story. So Give them happens, anything. So what happens? What happens is he calls me yesterday and he has a client that needs what 50, 50 so, points? Uh, eighty points. Okay, so eighty points. And what's happening, there's some late payments. And yes, you can remove late payments from your credit reports. And the way that you do it is there's a, the law that the creditors have to follow. And that law says that if you are late and they, they report a late payment on your credit report, they have to notify you within 30 days mm -hmm. of putting that on your credit report. And they don't. FCRA. So you just challenge them. You have to. That, um, that tell me how you notified me. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is, is yes, you can remove the late payments. It takes time. Every time you write letters to the bureaus, it takes 30 days for them to respond. So, you right. know, an average credit repair could take six to 12 months. You know, it took you a while to get into it. It's going to take you a while to get out of it. Right. Which you have no time for. Right. And most of the time people are trying to get into contract and they're in a hurry. So there's not a lot of time. So what you can do is if you have somebody that has great credit say mom dad uh, spouse brother sister and a great friend anybody that has great credit and their credit uh, on their credit re uh, credit cards then you they can put you on as an authorized user and that way their great credit mm -hmm. will hop on your credit right. report. And the key your credit doesn't hop on their report. It's yep. just their credit hops on yours. So now your score jumps. Right. I've been doing credit repair for 10 years. And they've been telling us for 10 years they're going to take this away. It is still active today. Mm -hmm. So use it while you can. Absolutely. And the key thing to add to her that she told me right away uh, was to make sure that their balance uh, does not exceed 30%. See, I was listening. Of their, right, right. Uh, of their limit. So that right. was a key thing. So again, um, with Daniel Chalk, I... Um, I talked about the utilization ratio and talked about from the balance is zero, your limit is 5,000. So essentially, whatever that balance is for 10,000, it shouldn't exceed $3,000, right? 30%. Is that correct? Right, I'm really right, bad right. And what happens okay. is once your, your, your balance is up to 50% of your credit limit, your you, credit Carol. score drops 18 points yeah. per credit card. So do, that's most of the time, that's what's hurting people is their balances are too high on their credit. Right. And credit. Uh, I should have told you this before, the only time if I ever cut you off, it's mm -hmm. to yell out these people's names. Oh, yeah. Ca hey, Carol, Carol, Carol Tina, thank you. Carol just said, I shared your live stream on Facebook. Good, Carol. Oh, Tina's saying, are we taking any questions? Uh, yes, absolutely. We're taking <laughs> questions because. 
is. And the reason I brought this back over here, guys, is don't worry. I'm taking care of Miss Ruth. We got Facebook Live, Instagram Live, but uh, I wanted her to practice this, and, and obviously you guys are happy about that too. So uh, any questions? Yes, why not? We're, we're here because I guarantee, ma'am, your question uh, is similar. I said, hi, Ruth. Is similar to maybe 10 to 12 people who have the same question on their mind. So right. ask, uh, ask away uh, while, while we're here. Uh, you know, one thing that really changed things for me, Ruth, was uh, Ramit Sethi's I Will Teach You To Be Rich. I don't know if you ever got a chance, but all these self-help, all these finance books, they kind of dance around things, mm -hmm. but they don't tell you exactly what to do, like step by step and what's available to you. Um, this was in 2009, but his was really um, great as far as, you know, credit cards, which credit cards, etc. cetera. Um, First, my first question is, what is the, what's the most common thing you see? I'm sure you've seen it all. What's the most common thing that you see and look for to try to improve for these people right away? And then we'll get to Adiana's question. And then I want you to grab one of those sheets that's on the top of yeah, the yeah, book right yeah. there. Yeah, I love it. But I, I didn't have to prepare questions because I knew we were going to talk for days. She didn't tell me anything, okay? So. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way. That's but first the best of way. all, there's a lot of people out there with a lot of opinions. And right. I want to tell you that we have a credit score chart on our website. And we'll give you the website. This comes right off of... FTC.gov. FTC. All right. So don't listen to everybody in their opinions. Sometimes I wonder where do they get their information from. Oh, this is so awesome. I take my information right off of FTC.gov. So if you want a copy of this, go to our website. You can print it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, also, CFPB. There's a lot of websites that you can get information. But really, the worst place to get information is off of a credit repair site with somebody's opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, there's a lot of us that have been out there. There's a lot of people out there that just started doing credit repair and they think they know everything. Right. Pass me a pen real quick because uh, Adiana is a recently 29 year old Bill from Illinois Department of Human Services. Okay, because uh, uh, as you scroll up, I don't want to. Oh, it's passing. I don't want to interrupt okay. Ruth and I don't want to miss. 29 year old Bill from the Illinois Department of Human Services. It turned over to a collection okay, Tina, keep agency. Keep going. It turned over to a collection agency. Oh. Uh, look at that. You got 10 comments already. She's more popular on, on, <laughs> well, on social you? media than me, and she doesn't even know it. So I'm gonna, if, I'm, if she's going to give me this much value, I'm going to leave to try to tell her anything that I can uh, tell her. And first off, she, she didn't charge me. She told me what we needed after so much struggle, and I, I told her right away. I started pitching uh, the show. And again, I, I'm even against uh, pitching. The whole point is... Uh, the thank you economy, you know, give, give, give in for free. And she finished my sentences. She knew my words. And I was like, man, this one's going to be easy. So let's really quick touch on Adriana's. So uh, she's saying. And yes, Carol, I can post it. I'll post the, this information. Info way you just held up. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Is she, is, she, is she your assistant? Like, hanging no, out she's a, one of my best friends. Okay, you're <laughs> awesome, Carol. She's my biggest support when it comes to credit repair. Well, I'm guaranteeing she's proud she of you. She gets me into companies to speak, and she does a great job. Awesome. So. Well, well, well deserved. That, that's. <laughs> Um, also, Illinois has changed the law when they started a financial crisis in the state. So I think uh, what she's getting to is something's went to collections. Um, what is she going to do about this? Um, go for it okay. before I talk. Uh, all right. First of all, the main things you need to know about collections. If you pay a collection that's showing up on your credit report, it will drop your credit score. It's not a maybe. It will drop your credit score because mm -hmm. things start to go old. Mm -hmm. So what happens is things start to go late. You have 30 day late, 60 day late, 90 yeah. day late, goes to 120, then it's charged off. When a creditor charges off an account, they are saying we're not going to collect from you anymore. Mm -hmm. So they put it into a collection pool. Mm -hmm. The collection companies buy the debt literally for four cents on a dollar most mm -hmm. of the time. Okay. okay? Market to it. So they're buying it and then they're coming after uh, you. Third party but, collection agencies. Yes. Okay. Okay, now the the statute of limitations in California is seven years. Every state is different, but California is seven years. Mm -hmm. So it's seven years from the date, the last day you made a payment to the original creditor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when the collection company gets it, they don't get to start seven years from the day they get it. Right. It's seven years from when the original creditor let it go. Got it. Okay. And so that's for anything. That's for ba bankruptcy lien seven. Bankruptcy is seven to ten years. To ten years. This yes. is collections. This is collections. This okay. is credit card debt. So you only have seven years. Mm -hmm. So if you have something that's five years or or older, you're mm -hmm. only looking to pay ten to twenty percent of the debt. Mm -hmm. I have a whole debt settlement class I can. She teach just said it. it's thirty years late. 
Oh. So that's over. Uh, uh, that's, now, that's, Gina, that's, she's telling me about a debt she has in Illinois. I'm going to tell you, the state of Illinois is crazy when it comes to right? debts. You got to yes. know which, you gotta which laws. You got to know where you're at. Yeah. So, um, Tina, I'm going to look into that for you because if it's a government debt, I'm going to tell everybody, any state government debt, they will just continue to come after you. Yep. Student loans, um, anything government. So if you're dealing with what to pay first, mm -hmm. whenever you're dealing with something on your credit report, take the care of the government stuff first. Right. Everything else we can get rid of. And I, I hear you, Tina. I hear you, ma'am. She says, I don't even remember having uh, the debt. But... I want to say one thing in times like these in any situation uh, the worst thing we could do is brush it under the rug I said this yesterday to Daniel Chalk but I love the fact that you know I've listened and read them all but I love the fact when Tony Riven said that the best way you can relieve stress is to take massive action towards whatever it is that's bothering you uh, you know you can consult other people that's one way or consult Ruth but taking a step and that means that's if you want to increase so the issue he had was uh, with uh, you know the auto payments. He says, "Hey, I swear I made them from Bank of the West um, to Golden One. Golden One's not receiving them. They're not answering uh, my phone calls. And Bank of the West has told me that this is a mistake on their part. So we got a letter in writing. We have all this evidence. I was going to upload it via uh, on Equifax, Thanks, TransUnion, and Experian uh, for him. Uh, but at the end of the day, instead of avoiding all that and waiting around for him to jump, uh, because he's trying to sell his home." get this pre-approval and buy another home. Um, I called up Ruth, like we just said earlier, and she said, oh, no, well, you gotta just shout him as authorized user, he'll bump him to 80. I'm like, I li like, Ruth, you just saved me. You have no idea with the amount of knowledge that you had. So. And remember, authorized user, we're at the end of the month. So they if you call the, the creditor now, mm -hmm. then um, is they'll report it so he could buy his house at the beginning of next month. All right, Steve, thank so. you for joining us. Janine, don't get weirded out, Ruth, if I just start oh, yelling. Oh, Janine says she, we're in the office, uh, Janine. Oh, Janine, I spoke with you earlier today, Janine. <laughs> so, the only time... You talked me into this, Janine. Oh, only, no, I'll, I'll explain later, and, she'll, she's, and Ruth's going to thank me later. Yeah. But uh, this is uh, the only time you'll ever hear me don't get weirded out if I just start yelling out names. It's very yeah. important to engage with uh, everyone. And guys, Ruth's here. You're lucky to have her. Um, she's cool enough to give you all this information uh, for free in this short time. So if there's something that you want to ask, Janine says, LOL. Uh, we uh, this is the time to ask it and we know how valuable it is and I love your email caption by the way it had something to do with persistence did it not the email caption uh, I'm sorry your signature your signature read yeah, it to about me about the priceless being priceless uh, that yes one? yes do you remember what it was? The credit repair is priceless. Something about education is priceless. Yeah, I know. Here, here's, here's why I brought it up. The best advice that I ever got, if you guys watch McDonald's the Founder. The credit dispute process is, is proven, proven the, and the education is priceless. And the education is priceless. So it had nothing to do with persistence. I was wrong. Yes. But <laughs> uh, persistence is important. And I, I believe in Cal Calvin Coolidge's quote, look it up. It was at the intro of the founder um, uh, about McDonald's, the, the movie, you should watch that. But it basically says that, you know, in this world, it doesn't matter how smart you are, uh, how many PhDs you have or whatever you have. The most important attribute in Calvin Coolidge's opinion in that quote, one of our presidents was persistence, that nothing takes the place of persistence, uh, unwavering, unemotional in anything you do in life. And I can't underestimate that if there's anything I want you to, to to leave you guys with as this crazy indian and to touch on subway real quick if you're ever listening deep dinsda he was a, a development agent for that just sold it uh, all of his source for about 20 million his territory all of stocked in that whole side he had a plaque of that and he sent me that when i was on the marketing board with him and then i i walk in and she goes i used to do some stuff with subway and i'm like we do here just meant to cross i used paths. to run subway sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> i managed three stores <laughs> and, the, and the first thing she says to me is you know it's really tough for the employees for my mom who's going to be watching welcome to her life you know i'm so lucky to have her and she deals with hr and it's not it is not easy, um, but anyways, tangent, back to, I digress, back to uh, giving you guys Some credit value. Keys. Yes, uh, what, I so know what most Janine common. I want me to tell you. Huh? Yeah. Well, I know what Janine would want to say. Sure, sure. Janine would say, make sure you keep your credit card balances low, mm -hmm. 
Make sure you have four open trade lines. So it could be a home loan, a car loan, and two credit cards. If you don't one. have a home loan and a car loan, you need to have four credit cards. I, We have a client. We took everything negative off of her um, credit. We talked this morning about it, Mary and Janine and I. We talk every morning about our clients, and, um, and we pray mm. and make sure we get results for everybody. Oh, cool. So... Um, you know, the, the thing is, we took everything off, and now she doesn't have a score. If you don't build positive credit as we're taking off the negative credit, you're not going to go anywhere. If we, you know, we had some clients that we took everything negative off, and they ended up with a 760 score because of their prior credit. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, a 700, but we can't get them into the 760. That's where you want to be. Your mid-score needs to be 760. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom end of the best credit. Mm -hmm. So 760 is your goal, your middle score. Four credit, four trade lines. Mm. Keep your credit cards under 30% of the limit or it drops your credit score. Mm. Okay? If you have collections, don't pay them unless you talk to us. Make mm. sure they take them off. There's a way to settle them. And I believe you should never pay a collection in full. Mm. You should always settle it. Doesn't matter if it says settle for less than agreed. Mm. Okay? Settle. It doesn't hurt. So just call us. Mm. Uh, we're here to help you. Um, and then, you know, the main thing is just, I guess, you know, don't rely on people mm. that don't know credit, okay? Yeah. Uh, loan officers don't know credit as well as we do just because there's no credit school. Yeah, and there's so many other attributes of him, yeah, the regulations that they have to. They know, they they know, know their, their products. products. So, they know their numbers. Right. So, so we can help with it. You know, we can help with even tax liens, mm. okay? If you have tax liens and you're in a payment arrangement mm -hmm. or you... Um, or you've paid. We can. You can actually with the form twelve uh, two seventy seven. Google it. Fill it out. Right. You can get them off the credit yourself. Everything you can do yourself, and we teach it. And that's that's exactly what what I did. Uh, any any some. I know you've been giving some seminars in San Francisco, but this is why yeah. I made Ruth do this because in two thousand seventeen. Hi Allison. Uh, Hi Jennifer. Don't get good job. <laughs> don't get me started on uh, where's our attention at, and, and that's why I told her this is equivalent to giving so many uh, seminars and, and giving value for free. So let me think uh, the way I would. Let's talk about limit uh, increasing uh, your limit so again all my information came from uh, from Remit Sidney so if you do have a card which whose balance is at zero and that's a key point don't do this if you have a balance um, every everybody so far except for Capital One would you agree with me and please correct me if I'm wrong that I can uh, time to time maybe every six months if I remember correctly call them up and say hey my limits five thousand I would love, uh, I got some expenses, things coming up, I need 25000 yeah. And I did that with American Express, boom, they granted it. So now, because I'm with the parents, I don't have a mortgage, I don't have those type of things. I now had four cards that, that had 5000 that I slowly got, and I now have four cards that have 25000 limits. That's awesome. And um, one thing that Daniel mentioned yesterday is if you're not using that card, uh, the worst thing um, you know you can do is people think, okay, I paid that thing off, let me close it. No, don't close credit cards. God, I, if you I, close I, credit car cards, you're going to drop your credit. And my mother, our CFO, did that. Once you have eight oh, years worth of history on a her, credit card on your credit report, if you close it, you will drop your score forty points. You hear that? Don't close credit cards. Use them once every four to six months. Yeah. Make or, sure you buy a take a ca uh, take a gas cup of coffee and then pay it off. Yep. Or, uh, one thing again, Roman said was instead of, his opinion is variable costs on your check cards, as far as credit cards, use fixed costs, meaning ones that are monthly bills because you can automate and pay them uh, off. Would you agree, Ruth, that with that card, whatever, your Netflix bill, your, your magazine yes. bill, your nine ninety nine, I agree 100%. It, it, it's, it's no use to you if you do not... Um, Kind of use that set of automatic bill to that 999 Netflix on that card that's zero instead of closing it mm -hmm. and have it pay itself off because what does that do, Ruth? It actually kind of, I guess, utilizes that card, builds your credit, you'd say? Yeah, okay. If you have a great credit score, pay your credit cards off every month. If you're trying to build your credit score, you need it to increase, don't pay the balances off every month. Mm -hmm. Leave a small balance, like one mm -hmm. month could be a dollar, next month could be three dollars, next could be five dollars because if you pay it off to zero, every month then what the being reported is zero it looks stale right okay, so you need to make sure your credit's getting used now mm -hmm. the only time you don't want to do that is if you have a large credit card like a twenty five thousand dollar limit and mm -hmm. you have it high and you leave a dollar you could get 
charged interest for all of that because you didn't pay it off. So don't listen to me if you have a large credit card. But if you're trying to build your credit cards, do not pay them off every uh, month in to zero. Mm -hmm. Switch them up. Um, Leave a small balance. Let's talk about APR for a second. Albert Einstein, what did he say? The greatest invention ever uh, created for a man was compounding interest. That's, that, that's where they make um, everything. Uh, and a closed mouth doesn't get fed, guys. This is your family. You, you know, know your rights. Know what you're supposed to do. And then you gotta, you got to fight for your family. Or you can have Ruth do it for you but um utilize some of the things when you if you do talk to her um to actually do that so what are some some best practices okay we got somebody out there they got a five thousand dollar limit they you know got they're, they're four thousand something and they keep throwing their three hundred dollar four hundred dollar payments uh towards it but apr you know jumps it back closer to that five thousand for them uh because their, their apr rates like something crazy what are they doing 20 percent 20.99 20 or something um what are some ways that that you know you go in and start to negotiate it down or what do you tell them first of all pay off the damn card all right because right. uh, so, people ask me all the time can i settle this debt if you haven't gone late the creditor is not going to settle mm. i've tried even for elderly people i've tried mm. and, and and unfortunately they had to go late then i settled the debt right away in mm. six months late it's crazy the way that it works so you purposely want them to go late one month but they trust yeah, you because you're in their hands and, and, oh, because that was, allows you okay, right because this lady she was an el she was a mother mm. of, of a friend of mine right and she wasn't he was taking care of her bills mm -hmm. so Good man. what happened was that they it was bank of america they mm -hmm. wouldn't settle so we decided she didn't need her credit yeah, yeah. To be, you know for anything yeah. so we're going to go ahead and let her go late right and then six months in they no they i would trust you because sometimes there's a method i don't like to tell people no, they're no, no. late <laughs> no no but you're being honest and transparent and that's why they respect you because sometimes even what sounds like the wrong thing allows the loophole for the for you to be able to do the next thing, right? right. And if there's trust there and they know it, then in a heartbeat, I would tell my client, go late so you're allowed to uh, do that, um, because there's always a method to the madness, right? right. Um, right. Uh, so once they do go late, now you have the ability to do to what settle. Ruth, to settle. Does yeah, that include I, APR? I well. The, what APR, does settle What does settle mean APR for layman's terms? A whole different people different, who don't might not know. Uh, thing here, settling an account is to pay less than what you uh, say your balance is. Minimum payment, that kind of thing. Well, let's say that that you have a balance, a credit card of ten thousand dollars, and it's you're hurting to to try and pay it. Well, if once you start to go late. Most of the creditors will settle for 50%. So if you have 5,000, you can pay it off, you're done. The credit card's closed, you cannot use it again, mm -hmm. but now you've gotten rid of that debt. And most people at that point, they just want to get rid of debt. People that have gone through bankruptcy, they walk out going, I will never have another credit card in my life. Well, guess what? You have to have credit mm -hmm. cards in order to actually function, okay? And we both remember we having those thoughts, real right? Estate. Yes, when I but, went through my mess, I said never again, mm -hmm. but you have to in order to move forward. You just have to use it in a smart way. Mm -hmm. Like he said, put the um, put your Comcast bill on your credit card. Mm -hmm. Pay your gas. Put your groceries on your credit card. The cash that you'd normally use to pay those at the store, mm -hmm. then go and pay your credit card. Right. So that way you're using it responsibly and you're not creating debt. Yep. Because uh, people are so afraid of the credit cards because they're like, that's too yeah. much debt. That's well, the crazy no, no, no. part. I mean, it's such an uh, emotional subject. Everyone's embarrassed about it. They don't like talking uh, about it. Hey, Mary. Um, and then they look around. Hello, we Mary. Have the whole Hello, office David. On now. <laughs> uh, they, they don't like. They don't like talk about. Let's talk about you. Because because people are in, in, embarrassed, right? They don't want to share with others so then what do they do they brush it under the rug they yeah. brush it under the rug and what's crazy is we often see it even between spouses Ruth ah right? yeah right oh because my gosh, yes. because they don't and the biggest thing of you know I've, I've read it all I don't know why the Dave Ramsey's the all the books you can imagine and he's talked about keeping up with the Joneses yeah. and how sometimes wife hello Mary uh, will say you know but so-and-so has this but so-and-so has that you know well we're not, you know, that I'm very happy for them, but we're not 
we don't have the same, they have a different journey, right? They have a yes. different thing. But my point is for spouses, according to Dave Ramsey, was the first thing you do is you guys got to hold yourself accountable, go out and open and share things. And then you could talk to each other about, hey, you spend this on this, this and that. I've been, I've been married a year and already th what I'm saying, I need to practice what I preach. I still need to do a good job of us being together. You know, I, I trust my wife and everything, but it's a way that we can be open, hold each other uh, accountable and um, you know, go to her, say, hey, if you have any issues now, d don't be afraid. You know, now that we're married, I can help you, right? <clears throat> Definitely, how, how you got to stay is, open. Uh, I used to work in a foreclosure company many years ago, right. and I worked in the eviction department. So after that, people were foreclosed on, then I had to do the processing to get them evicted out of the house. Mm -hmm. Not that I was proud of it, but it was yeah. a job many, many years ago. Tough ones. But I'm going to tell you, the spouses who did not talk to each other, we even had people that um, the husband shot the wife and then shot himself afterwards oh, oh, because yeah. of this. So, you know what? Debt in that is the last thing you need to worry about. Right. It doesn't matter. There's ways to get out of it. Stop ruining your whole life, your health, mm -hmm. you know, your relationship with your families over debt. It's not worth it. Right. So, you know, if anybody is struggling with this, call me yeah. because there's a lot of things we can do. We could talk about how we're going to set up a strategy for you. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend debt consolidation companies because mm -hmm. they charge a lot of fees. Mm -hmm. They make a lot of promises. I've had clients that thought they paid off debts and then now they find out they didn't. So I don't like that strategy. Yep. So there's another way to handle it. And I, you know, call our office. And it goes back to, to you're going to immediately feel so much better too, because at the end of the day, what can you do in any situations? Um, gotta run, helping my Texas. See you Texas later, move. Tina. Thanks uh, is, for is he moving here. into college, Tina? We wish him the helping best of luck. Move, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, the best thing, hope to see you in Illinois uh, sometime. Is that <laughs> yeah. where you're from originally? No, okay. I, no. I was, awesome, uh, I was trying to help um, setting up credit in, in Illinois for a while. Oh, so got it. Got I'll it. go back out there and um, do something. I, I said this before earlier, but again, back to the, the whole marriage thing, take massive action towards it. Uh, uh, Tina, so they're, uh, let's go uh, take a back step. So they're late. My question, original question was, um, and I want to ask the tough ones because I'm trying to think like them like real they'd be like oh Roman Roman Ruth they're talking about cool stuff but they're not giving me any value on what right. uh, I need and that really changes our, our amount of topics and questions uh, what do you you when you settle settle means you're settling the debt does that mean APR goes out the window yeah, at that point? Yeah APR is out the window. Okay so then they don't have to it worry about it. doesn't even that. matter right. so when you want to settle a debt you know the older the debt is, the less you're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, reasons you can give them why that you want to settle debt. And the reason could be, there's a rumor at work that there's going to be a layoff. I think I might be in it. Mm -hmm. That could be a reason to settle debt. Mm -hmm. Or my spouse is no longer working. Mm -hmm. Or I have an elderly parent I need to take care of. Okay, so whenever you're dealing with trying to settle an account, call us first it's a free phone call mm -hmm. just call us and we'll help you get through it because right. that's what we're here to do is to help you get through the tough times so tina hopefully you're still on if your thing's more than 30 years in illinois uh that's actually good news because the older it is the easier it's going to be for Ruth right. to settle it that's right um so that's and actually that shouldn't even really be a real news. debt but i'm going to tell you in <laughs> illinois it could possibly be right and and that's obviously haunting Tina in the back of her mind so you know i, I Props to her because she wasn't afraid of any what anybody thinks. She's going to put it out there and she's going to get the information yeah. um, for herself. So um, what else? We talked about common things just in the credit card world. Um, uh, what are some... What are some typical things that are not as, obviously when something's way above somebody's head, that's exactly why they come to Ruth, but what are some common uh, quick answers and, and things you kind of see that you can think of? Well, the one thing um, I want to tell people, I'm glad you oh, asked yeah, that question, yeah. what I want to tell you is the difference between having good credit and bad credit. If you don't fix your credit before buying a home, hmm. if you have a $500,000 loan, 30 year fixed, okay, the difference between having good credit and bad credit over the 30 year term, you're gonna pay an additional $158,000 because you didn't fix your credit before you got that loan. Mm -hmm. How many years do you think you have to work to pay off that additional $158,000? Yep. Car loan, four year, $35,000 car loan, four year term, the difference in good credit and bad credit is $14,000. Yep. You can almost buy another car uh, uh, for $14,000, so James. fix your credit. If there's one thing that I have to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab that book. And he's so young that he probably got the information from people like Ruther, I'm sure it's out there, right? Uh, of Raman City, so what he did was every few pages he'll put up a T-chart 
and the t-chart was exactly what you just said of the difference of you know compounding interest in positive ways and mm -hmm. FICO scores the difference of what that means for the mortgage you qualify for and then over time on 30 years what that looks like but the goal is to put it in perspective of how important it is to kind of start early or you know if you feel things have already done attack it right away because mm -hmm. what is the outside variable of all this Ruth uh, as soon as they go to you it's time right it's time. time takes care of everything yeah. but you got to do your part and attack it right away and not be afraid of it not be right. afraid to talk about it and, and I, I, I'm gonna be honest student loans too if I'm gonna struggle. end up personally I'm not perfect I'm gonna end up being one of Ruth's clients and later talking about any ways that um, I have to have no ego and be humble enough to know that knowledge is infinite right everyone you will ever meet know something you don't bill nye the science guy said that but what, but what that really means is i hate it when people say well he's smarter than him there, there's no such thing I, I have to be humble enough to know that yes i know a lot but there's going to be certain things that ruth knows that i don't know and vice versa and she's thing, teaching me right? about credit i'm teaching her about social media and saying <laughs> yeah. we have to go live today but I, I i've tried the last three years to be so humble about that fact that my 96 year old grandfather he's been a farmer his whole life well he knows something better about growing vegetables than i do about business right so anyways i just want to put that out there it has nothing to do with credit but i think that should be the mindset and the approach of when you consult someone else or if your uh, spouse gives you an objection on why you shouldn't call um uh, ruth and uh let's see M moving on um if we talk about FTC.gov, for those who just joined, Jane, thank you for joining us and everybody uh, else. We're talking about a federal, not local, federal Fair Credit Reporting Act. And then there's the Fair Credit, there's the, Fair there's the Billing. Fair Collections Practices Act. Okay, there's that. That's and for the collection. That's the, and then there's the, the Fair Credit Well, that's a part of the billing one? Then there's a billing act also. Okay. But the what, main what two are FCRA okay. and FDCPA. FCRA is for the credit bureaus and the creditors. FDCPA, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, is for the collection companies. Mm. And this is things that they don't want you to know. No. Um, and... It's just so laid out. It's so For easy. instance, yep. uh, on, what the collection Please. companies don't want you to know is if they're calling you, pick up the phone, tell them, do not contact That's me by phone. That's actually illegal, I learned. Only by mail, contact me, only by mail. Don't tell them, don't contact me in any way because then they're going to try to go for a lawsuit. Right. But just tell them, don't contact me by phone, only by mail, and then they can't call you. And if they continue to call you, then we can sue them. You can't, and, and we're we have easy. A, and we have an attorney that will take care of it for you and doesn't charge you anything. I, I remember uh, someone doing that way back when, so when I was going across this, I read that right on FTC.gov, right? Because yeah. they'll have a setup. And I go, no way, does that employee not know that? But obviously they probably aren't even trained on it. And you know no. what's crazy through this process is I'll immediately, when you call, they have, you gotta understand the big picture here. They got your number, if you use the same cell phone, because of your score, your social, maybe you don't know the truth, they're immediately going to send you to one area or one department. And sometimes blocking your <laughs> caller, I'm telling you, you're blocking your caller ID doesn't work. What's frustrating for me is immediately, no offense to anyone out there, because I am Indian, I'll go to a call center in Mumbai, or I'll go to a call center in the Philippines, and they're not even aware of the federal I asked them, I said, are you, are you even aware of, about this? And no, I'm like, okay, well, if you want to sound uh, smart, next meeting with your supervisor, be sure to mention that to them. <laughs> but all of this takes time, and we have jobs, and we have lives, and then we give up, and then we move on, and we take it uh, in, the, in the you know what, and still keep going through these problems, and nothing uh, happens. And this is, I'm so passionate about this, that this has got to be refreshing for Ruth too, because um, I, I understand uh, all of this, and um, I've talked to so many other people that I know people people want this knowledge. And after hearing Ruth talk for five minutes, I'm like, okay, she's 20 times more important than than any uh, you know a, any other person as far as a banker because they may not have this information. But um, let's move on to some, what's something that they can do. Uh, we talked about setting that monthly bill to zero. Don't okay, close Okay, if they're it. worried about credit cards, if you don't have enough credit cards and you have poor credit, you can open secured credit cards. Mm. Secured credit card is where you go to the bank and you put in maybe a $200 deposit or a $300 deposit, and then they'll give you a credit card for that limit. That secured credit card works just as well as any other credit card. So if you're trying to build accounts, mm. then um, just go ahead and, and open up secured credit card. It's the best. Um, you, you have an iPhone charger by chance? 
Just having a job of this again. Oh, this is what life is all guys. about. <laughs> no, no, awesome. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna plug it in and keep this going because I want to be able to download this after and it's a little kind of dynamic. Sweet, sweet, awesome. <laughs> um, but get back in there, Ruth. All right. She's the one with the, the real spot. knowledge. Um, back in our spot. But, but go for it. As you were saying, Ruth, you plug that into the side of your laptop. Yep. And I'm going to plug this right into here so we're charged up still. Uh, okay. Boom. Faster, it'll be better. Okay. This is why I love live. Because people love this. Let's see. Do we still got us? We got, in it. got it. Got here? it. Got it. Here. Yes. All right. Okay. Is anyone laughing? Greg, Erica, Randall, what's up? Sean, Maxwell. Uh, look at that. Sean's here. Looks so oh, good looking. Hey. Frankie, what's up? Awesome. Frankie's a, a, a veteran. Oh, hi, Erica. A veteran. While we're on that, hi, uh, ve ve there's only loan programs for veterans. Anything with credit in the credit world, a veteran you can think of? Probably, probably no. not. No, no, yeah, no, no. But you know federal. what? Veterans are. Um, Should have went with this There's angle. a lot of exceptions for veterans. Um, they don't have to have such great credit. I mean, they okay. can have collections. They can do a lot of different things for veterans. So if you are a veteran and you have bad credit, still try and go for that loan because there's a good chance you're going to get it. Right. And that's another thing. If you have collections that are medical collections, medical mm. collections don't hurt your credit. Mm. As as Well, I mean, I'm sorry. They'll hurt your credit score, but a lender will give you a loan with medical collections mm. on it. So take care of all the other ones instead right. of the medical ones. Right. If you want to do a review of your credit report and you, you need a copy of your credit report um, our website has where you can buy a report for $20 it's all three bureaus all three scores and it's a soft pull so it doesn't hurt your credit score because okay. what does that mean I'm the annoying guy yeah. but I'm trying to think right. I'm trying to think so, like them so soft, soft pull versus hard hard pull is where you you are going and applying for credit that's a hard pull five to nine inquiries in a two-year time period drops Hurts. your score 20 points Okay, yeah, yeah. so you, we are fixing some people's credit where we're just removing inquiries. Mm -hmm. So be careful with those inquiries. Yeah, and uh, so you want uh, you want soft pulls, but a soft pull is, and you're gonna be proud of me for this. Uh, I I paid fifteen dollars. Uh, she's a busy lady. She gets hits up all the time. She got a lot of calls since. Um, um, I they're not allowing this. So who's FICO? FICO's Fair Isaac Corporation. I know you're impre yes. impressed. Um, <laughs> That, I but I pay 15 bucks a month or 14.99 uh, a month because they kind of give me real time insights on every single thing that's happening to my credit, especially when someone else, like a loan company, inquires or I think it's good for identity theft. So I wanted to put it on my parents. I heard now after calling them back that only if you had it um, before you could still have it, but they're not offering it anymore to people in the future. Why? Who the hell? Uh, knows uh, there's other ones out there, right? You see Credit Karma, Credit Sense. Okay, let hey, me tell you, let me tell you about all of them. Yeah, Soft okay. is Credit Karma and all those annual report and that. But I'm also going to tell you they're not accurate. Okay. So if you want to pull an accurate report, you go to our website. Okay. And it's twenty dollars. All three bureaus, all three scores. It's a mortgage credit report. Is this still a soft pull though? Or would it's it be a hard? soft pull. Yeah, interesting. It's That's the key. Because cause you can't do hard pulls. You're allowed one credit report a year. By law. Yeah, but they don't give you scores. Okay. Okay. So then you got to pay eight dollars per score. So if, if you check buy, all my, check you all my talks, scores. this is the one talk where I'm taking notes because <laughs> this crap is so valuable. Uh, no, it's not crap. That's the wrong word to use. It, uh, but keep going. Sorry. It's just something that they don't teach in school. So I had to learn it the hard way. Mm. Um, but so. Order your credit report. You don't have to have monitoring every month because it's you're, you're spending money you don't really need to spend and they're, they're not updating you on information. Mm. I have four daughters. When we first started the company back in 2007, mm -hmm. we would sit there and we opened up with all these different companies mm -hmm. and then we'd pay off a credit card and wait to see who would report. Mm. Sometimes it took three months for something to report. They time just is don't variable. keep up. They love it. They want it. They don't keep up. And they Credit Karma... Credit Karma doesn't even give you account numbers. Yep. We could not do yep. credit repair with a Credit Karma report. Right. It's just not going to happen. Right. So um, just be careful who you're pulling from. And we can give you the soft pull. And the reason is because it's for educational purposes. Mm -hmm. You're not applying for credit. Mm -hmm. So that's how we do it through um, our partnership with San Francisco Housing Development. Mm -hmm. That's where I teach uh, classes. Interesting. Interesting. 
Uh, and they have some unique laws on housing there in San Francisco. It's good, good for them. Yes. I know San Jose is going to slowly start um, following those uh, as well. Uh, what did I write down? Because usually I'm so bad at like listen then speak Roman. And my <laughs> biggest weakness is uh, sometimes I cut people off. That's been my resolution. But good thing I can write things down. So, so I notice when I go in, um, I go in, I see a section for... We have negative derogatory indicators. Okay, I'm ta what I'm saying is when oh, you can actually, at a credit report. yeah, I'm, I, yes. I can go in. Uh, I did it for myself. I did it for my client uh, recently as well. Once once I knew this, I wanted to upload, uh, you know, a letter I had uh, along with the Bank of the West saying right to try to dispute and remove the negative derogatory indicator out there. And again, people don't know this, so yeah, it's a pain in the butt, but persistence one by one. The, who are the three bureaus guys? I went to TransUnions, uh, how to file a dispute, right? Uh, then I go to um, uh, Equi Equi Equifax, mm -hmm. and let me know if I'm doing anything and wrong experience. too, I wanna know. <laughs> Ex experience, uh, and then I go and do their process. And thanks to the MyFICO thing that I told you, uh, it immediately, um, and this was for, for my thing. Chase said I was late when I wasn't late and I could, could prove that to them. But they put a negative derogatory indicator and I went down 78 points uh, yeah. because of that. So I tried the route of calling them, persisting, doing all that, using my negotiation scripts and techniques. It doesn't do crap. <laughs> and then I have this old... Uh, <laughs> I have this old letter, sorry, I have this old letter uh, from, you know, a general counsel that he always told me to use when people, you know, had little bills and they just wouldn't respond to me or do whatever, right? Uh, and I sent that, but I attached the statement uh, and circled in red per FTC.gov instructions um, of, of me actually paying it in May, uh, and then I uploaded that. Um, and I noticed after Equifax, who's been in the news right now, uh, I got a MyFICO <laughs> indicator, it shot back up. 78 points yes and what I saw as a detail in there was even if the dispute doesn't go your way is this correct Ruth that just by addressing it putting that letter there um, actually gives a little bump I might be wrong Ruth you know it uh, gives a bump but, but what happens is so let's say you're fixing your credit and then now you're at a great score and you're ready to get a loan and you're right on the edge of qualifying mm -hmm. and, but the lenders not gonna do a loan with you until you remove the disputes so oh, if you're okay. on the edge of qualifying and we remove the disputes, you may drop lower again because of that factor. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So you got to be careful if you're on the edge um, okay. in okay. that. So. Okay. Wonderful. But that goes to show massive action towards it um, did make some uh, of a difference, right? At least that they're aware. And then back to what you said, they have to respond within 30 days in writing, correct? Uh, yes. Each one when you well, do that, that. I'm glad you said that because if okay. you dispute online with the credit bureaus, they you help. extend time periods. So when oh. you write letters where you're sending them in, they have 30 days to respond. But if you dispute online, they now have 45 days, and you have no no tracking, no trace. So I always um, say in letters. In letters. Even letters. Yeah. It's the best way, and they yeah. want certified. Hello, Lisa and Rudy. Who just Hi. joined us. <laughs> Rudy and, and what's crazy is there's some people on, uh, on here that probably like. I had no idea you're even a credit report consultant and they listen to you. Oh, this is my first live. And, and they drop and you, they see how much knowledge you drop and they go, honey, we got to call Ruth, right? <laughs> like, and, and they already know you like you trust you, right? Because you're family. But um, to me, this is, this is unique knowledge that aside from my real estate, the restaurants, all that, that I'm just like ner a nerd about that I like to seek all the time on. Maybe it comes from the athletic side of me, but how can I evolve? How can I be better? What are the rules and how can I use them in a positive way towards uh, my life? Because we all deserve that, right? We don't deserve stress. Mm -hmm. And what are the number one reasons for divorce? Money. Like you touched on, what are the biggest stressors uh, with uh, health? Money. So, and, and when you trace that back, it's usually debt, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And just to take a quick side away from that, if you can tell us about Ruth, uh, your base of the pyramid is the credit world. I think for me personally, that's the most valuable attribute for you. But T, I want to leave with something new too. So you started to venture off into capital tax gains. I'm having my CPA on, who's amazing this next Wednesday. But as soon as you say the word tax, capital tax gains, I want to run the other way because I'm humble enough that I know nothing about <laughs> taxes. And it's a very, very complicated world. So that's why I recommend to you guys, it's worth the money to 
have a CPA, then get in more trouble like in the future. We reached yeah. a point when my parents, the business was growing so much that we, we had to bring in a quality CPA. Uh, and my mentors always told me, if you're a businessman, your two best friends should be your CPA and your lawyer and be so close with them because it's going to, you know, they're going to say, oh, all lawyers are expensive. No, but create a long-term relationship now. It's going to save you more in the end. Just like talking to Ruth, keeping a relationship, it'll save, it'll preventative maintenance, right? Yep. Um, but tax, capital tax gains. Uh, what made you venture out of those other two attributes besides credit? And what are those? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the capital gains um, tax savings, but our capital asset dealer doesn't really like us to be on social media with it, so I can briefly mm -hmm. describe it, but anybody who wants to really know with about respect, it With respect, sir, backhand slap. <laughs> so basically, you can defer your capital gains taxes on the sale of your primary residence, investment property without doing a 1031 exchange, a business, anything that has a, a value of 500000 or more, even coin collections, art, classic cars, mm -hmm. uh, airplanes, but you can defer the tax for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And if you write that check to yourself, in, in my example, in my webinar... Hello, Diana. I, hi, Diana. That's Sorry, my niece. Sorry, Hi, niece. She... Um, if you have a $145,000 tax bill and you write a check to yourself and invest it, um, you can invest it tax-free, pretty much grow it tax-free, mm -hmm. and that 145000 will grow into over 640000 in 30 years. Mm -hmm. So you'll not only have your 145000 to pay your tax bill, but you'll have an additional half a million dollars you just earned yourself. So talk to us before you sell. Right. We can help you um, save a lot of money. And mm -hmm. for your investors out there, I ran a 1031 exchange company for 25 years, and I loved helping everybody defer capital gains taxes with that method, mm -hmm. but this is better because now you get to put the money in your hands and you don't have to wait till you die for your heirs to be able to touch it mm. you can touch it now and you can do something that's important in your life before you pass away you can actually take advantage of that hard-earned equity that's brilliant brilliant and to that attorney let me just touch on this subject real quick don't get me uh <laughs> started but yeah of course any attorney would say what is uh i mean, plead the fifth right stay silent that'll always reduce risk and i used to be that guy but this is where it's at guys rudy lisa gregory diana they're at their nine to fives too but we have to be humble to the fact of the shift of where's the attention at today what is the tv screen and your looking at it and guess what walking across the street has risks but do the pros outweigh the cons right and 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 you'll see you'll see that in corporations today uh the lawyers will say stay quiet when something like that happens that is actually disastrous 2015 versus 2017 the best thing to do is what they make a statement they go yeah. open right away yeah. and i think that you know news travels faster these days but it also dies quicker if that makes sense mm -hmm. uh because every week there's something what is it right now if i had to pick one it's the take a knee with the nfl stuff right you guys are bombarded with it and next week it's going to be something uh else so in my opinion it's attack it head on be transparent give free knowledge and if greg hears one thing doesn't even tell you but applies it to his life and it helps him i believe in the thank you economy that he's going to be guilted in the next time he has issues to refer you or to come to you in that way so um i agree mr attorney about the tax thing right with uncle sam that'll that'll be his normal thing but i say give 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 knowledge yeah. you know that it's yeah. gonna it's gonna come back to you but um Moving on. Besides tax gains, anything else that you guys are doing? Business credit. Okay. If you have a corporation or an LLC and you want to build a completely separate credit profile on your business or corporation, we can help you with that too. Let's talk about that for uh, a second. What would you say in your opinion uh, in the business credit world, now we're going from consumer to business credit, how does the universe um, kind of change from, from your uh, knowledge when it comes to business uh, credit? Well, business credit, you have a pay deck score okay. instead of a FICO score. I, I didn't know that. No, All right, so you want to try to get to an 80 pay deck score. That's like the high FICO score. Okay, and the way that you do that is you start by, you have your corporation set up. It has to be a corporation or an LLC. It has to be an entity, not your social security mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. And you have to be, there's there's about 26 steps to make sure everything's consistent. Every phone bill you open, every any account that you open has your name on it exactly as the corporation this needs. This is gold, dude. It's so, so brilliant. It's better to have a brick and mortar building. It's not necessary, but you need to have a telephone number. You need to have a website. Tax you, identification number. Yes. Is what separates a business, right? Yes. The tax ID. Okay. You um 
the, they'll check for a fax number, they'll check for a phone number. They want to know that you're not running your business off an AOL address or a Gmail. You've got to have your own website. Your niece is like, what's AOL? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you got But if you, if you, um, you got to have a website, you've got to have an email that's to your website. They want to know that you're professional. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different things you can do. You can actually get business credit on your business, um, a brand new business that starts mm -hmm. if you have good personal credit. Mm -hmm. But what we try and do is teach everybody to build your business credit without your social security number. So that way, unfortunately, if your business fails, it won't take you down personally. Got it. Uh, Rudy, back off. Okay, Rudy's hit, hitting on you. Saying, What's Rudy's you like, I just want to say you look fantastic and say hello. <laughs> We're on air <laughs> right now, you. man. Come on. Hey, he's probably, he's probably, he's probably her, her brother or something like that. I'm kidding, Rudy. We love you. <laughs> he's not my brother. <laughs> I'm just making you laugh. Um, interesting. So, uh, our CPA is going to be able to answer that. So, we were doing things all wrong. That's why we, you know, we brought him in on deductions and so forth. And um, now we'll have uh, uh, our our S corp, and we'll use our gas card, right? Because we weren't deducting it right, and we're driving yeah. to and from the stores constantly. And um, you know, Dad and Mom would say, "Hey, make sure we use the gas card when we use the stores because this credit card is specifically uh, only for gas or business related expenses." Obviously, this is organization for our CPA, but. As far as business credit, you have a corporate card, right? Uh, this is gonna be surreal for you. I'm so glad that I made you do this. <laughs> Erica, hey, don't hate on AOL. Still has AOL. I still have AOL. Diana yeah. knows. Erica, I can't believe you. If you got Hotmail, <laughs> if you got Hotmail, you have AOL. I immediately know you're ancient. Uh, but I'm kidding. But these are your, these are daughters. Erica. Oh, okay. Well, that means your dad's Enjoy paying it. the bill. Anyone who needs the help. Uh, in, in the corporate card world, uh, could you um, touch on that? Typically, people use it, right, for what I just said. Make sure you put business expenses yes, on there. Yes, make sure you don't use your corporate card for personal expenses. Yes. Definitely use them for your business expenses. You don't want to mix your corporation um, with your your personal bills. And that's pretty that's much it. That's for tax purposes. Yeah. They, any CPA that you have, any attorney is going to tell you, keep everything separate. Right, right. And the key is... Positives and negatives. Negatives, you don't want to do that because it could bite you in the butt. Positive is it's easier to deduct things or just to do the accounting for that S Corp probably, right? When you yeah, have the credit and, cards and you don't, there. if you start using personal, if you start using your personal amount. cards, your corporation cards for personal purposes, you break the veil of the corporation. So now people can come after you. Got it. So you uh, got to make sure everything stays separate. So I got one. Talk about techniques, techniques and strategies. I believe it's the psychology when paying off uh, debt. Um, the reality is people have four cards. They're in over their heads, right? And they mm -hmm. get that $800 paycheck. So what are they going to do with the minimum payments out there? They're going to take whatever they have left of that $800. And they're going to divide it by four and put all four towards there. But then they're playing the rat race game. Some yes. people talk about, and again, Ruth's going to be impressed that I know all this, uh, <laughs> the snowball method. Yes. and other methods yes. and for those of you listening who don't know correct me if i'm wrong the snowball uh, ball method means okay you have those four cards but um which whatever card has the least amount of debt uh, make the minimum payments on the other ones but the one that has the least uh go god i'm such a, a cursor i was gonna say go balls out on that go all out on that card and uh and, and immediately get that one aggressively paid first and then the next uh, respectively and the next and the next. That's a snowball method. Okay, I agree what with that. What do you... No, no, it's okay. There's many. I agree with that method except for you don't have to pay that one off completely. Get it under the 30%. Got it. Good. Then hop to the next one. Got it. So once it's under 30%, you're your uh, FICO score is being increased by five points. Mm -hmm. Once you get it under 15% of the limit, you're increasing your score 15 points. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about paying it off completely, but get them down under at least 30%, then hop to the next one. Got it. So then I would make the minimum payments on the ones under 30% right. and make larger chunk payments on the larger ones. Got it. And again, for anybody listening who jumped in, because I like to get, go, get super, super simple, is basically for those... Uh, who may not know by 30% she means of the whatever the limit is on your card get the balance on there how would you calculate that for example a $10,000 limit uh, on a card as soon as you finally hit 3,000 or under again you're in that 3,000 limit and I say this because I, I, I'm humble enough to know that 
if sometimes you know we're at a certain level hi Sherilyn and we this should this is the opposite for us my daughter just hopped on and she's always doing live and saying hi mom <laughs> uh, is this your daughter? The, no Sherilyn okay. yeah Sherilyn. oh Sherilyn hello Sherilyn awesome I got your mom she's on live in, she's in North Dakota you owe me one you got <laughs> yeah, mom on live. he got me on live Sherilyn and, and she's super intelligent you're lucky to have her and dude wait till you get older and, and uh, you're gonna continue she's I'm a sure teacher. you she's oh a I'm sure so, so she's calling you already asking questions every day right she already knows your mom it. she's your mom. already learned it all yeah she has it embedded in her um but yeah so that um that is more important and whoever that email was we're gonna get way more leads after, after this <laughs> one um where was i okay so i have another thing written down uh when i went on a tangent was when i went in there um i saw collections i saw negative indicators i saw personal information but then i saw public records yes. and i what crossed my mind was well, what the what the heck could possibly even go in that segment of public records where does that fall into play i mean thankfully i don't have anything in the public record section oh okay but carry on uh public and then write down trended credit so i talk okay about good i love it, I love it. <laughs> all right so public records i'm sure most people have heard as of july of this year anybody that had a public record on their credit report that was not undeniably yours which means they had to have your social on it your date of birth your address something that described you and made sure it belonged to you if they didn't have it they had to take it off so that means a lot of public records have come off for people and everyone's like celebrating mm -hmm. well guess what it's still there you still owe it right. just because they took it off your credit report does not mean that you don't owe the debt and if you don't know about it to take care of it, you could be an escrow. You put a deposit down on a house. Your lender is giving you a loan. You're sitting there ready to sign your loan documents. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the title company will go check public records. They don't check credit reports. They mm -hmm. check public records. And if it comes up with the lien, if you don't have the money to pay that lien, you just lost your house. Which wow. means you could lose your deposit. Right. So I'm sure that the lenders are figuring out a way to check public records before this all happens. Mm -hmm. But everyone thinks, oh, yeah, I got out of it. You didn't get out of it. The mm -hmm. debt's still there. Got okay? it. Okay. And that's another thing. When a debt gets past seven years old and it's no longer can be allowed to be on your credit report, the debt never goes away. They can't sue you for it. They can't report it on your credit report. All they can do is call you up and say, will you please pay? Mm. They're not going to do it, but mm. that's, you know, that's how people think they got out of debt. Right. Okay. They mm. never did it. Now, most of the time yeah. when you um, have cancellation of debt, right. let's say you settled a collection or you went through foreclosure and you have this debt that you didn't pay off, mm. the lender can send you a 1099-C. And what that means is they'll take that 1099-C and you have to put it on your tax return as income. So what can they do, what can they do Ruth, to get that uh, public record removed? What would be the starting point? You uh, just start disputing credit, just like we do. It. Yeah, Got we it. start writing the letters, we start disputing the credit. Stop the bleeding, get on it right away, right before it becomes uh -huh. a bigger uh, problem. Right, uh, and like I said, if you if you do the 12277, you can if you're in a payment arrangement with the IRS, get it off your credit. Mm -hmm. They can take it off if you've paid it off. Now, remember, once you pay off the IRS or you pay off a collection, mm -hmm. it's going to stay there now for seven years because it's from the date of last payment. Mm -hmm. So that's why you don't want to pay a collection because mm -hmm. it looks like it's become new. It's going to be seven years from the day you pay it. So many people say, well, I paid all my collections. I'm ready to buy a house. I'm in great shape. Well, no, you just ruined your credit mm -hmm. because you now dropped your credit score for seven more years because right. you didn't ask the collection company to remove it when you paid it. Right, and settled it. And it doesn't matter time. if it's a $2 collection, which I have seen. I have mm. seen collections for $1 on right, people. Right. And the, the damage it does to their credit report yep. is ridiculous. Yep, yep, okay? yep. Okay, now what I want to talk oh, about. I almost got there over a parking ticket, and my wife just joined. Parking and... tickets, you can't even renew your license if you don't pay them. Okay, well, thanks to her. The one was buried under somewhere, and she called me yelling at me over $40 parking ticket that is paid off for $74, but it was the final notice before collections, and it was before one of these, uh, talk was such a silly thing, right? Um, and we don't want to get to that. Um, before we go to trending credits, Ruth, remember I told you how um, people always think, how do we get these talks this long? And hello, Lisa, another person who thinks you Hi, look Lisa. beautiful. Oh, uh, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> and, uh, 
and the the whole thing uh, is, it feels like five minutes went by right now, Ruth. We're on like an hour and five minutes right now. Can oh you my gosh! That? And these people that's, sit here and listen to that long. No, but that's the thing. <laughs> well, the social media thing was make it be sixty seconds, make it be this and that. Yeah. When I cut out the radio, cut out the news, and started listening to some of my favorite podcasts on YouTube, I feel in those three years the amount of knowledge I got on that long drive was not only priceless but almost like at a PhD level of thinking. As long as the topic is someone who's intelligent or somebody like yourself who has knowledge, you've gotten an, an inside to their brain, right? Uh, and it's pretty amazing. And people say, well, how do you know all these things, Roman? So maybe I'm not listening to 94.9, and I'm actually listening to things like this. Hello, Diana, for joining us. But I digress. Cheryl, Cheryl, be proud of your mother. She's awesome. Um, <laughs> trending credits. Okay, trending credit. Trended credit came out last year, and what it is is it used to be where you can keep your credit cards at a high limit and just you know pay them as you as long as you paid on time you were good. But when you went to buy a house, if you paid off all your credit cards, you were ready to go. Well, now with trended credit, um, lenders can look back three years on your payment history. Mm. So if you're somebody that has run up your credit cards and you're only making minimum payments month after month after month, mm -hmm. you may have that great credit score, you may have that income, and they still may deny you for that loan. And that is... So make sure if you have a credit card, let's say the minimum payment's $25, you should be making at least $50 payment on that credit card. Got it. If you can make $100, great. But it should be at least $50. And then don't keep Ooh. using them. Make sure that the lenders see that you can manage your debt. Because if you keep using it and spending it, three years they can look back. So now you know, from this point forward, be responsible on how you're, how you're paying these debts. Because it could make a difference when you go to buy a house. So, from that same book, they say the nastiest APR of them all that people don't read and just sign um, is student loans and thank god there are certain ones you know that are regulated right uh everyone hates politics but but you let people go crazy and they'll go crazy there's good certain ones for certain federal grants and stuff like that certain rules don't let companies help you with your student loans call the companies so yourself. let me tell you i got a lot of indians here listening and um you're only a good kid if you're a doctor or a lawyer. If not, you're a failure. Oh. And so there's so many, including my sister, who's now uh, a doctor, that end up going uh, to the Caribbean after UC Davis or whatever to, um, uh, to, to go over towards there. And what they end up doing is, well, I can only use this loan at St. George's University, and, but, and it's the bank that they're partnered uh, with. And so they end up being a non-federal type of, of loan um, what what is my point? There's so many people that are in student loans. Don't let what, them steer you. Yeah. What advice would you give to somebody you know who's in the cycle of student loans and uh, one things you would look at to kind of help them? Okay. The Jump main thing. World. The main thing about student loans is parents don't co-sign your 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 um, students' loans. They they're gonna give them a loan to go to college. Don't co-sign it. Why? Because once you co-sign, I like um, the income-based repayment plan. And what that is, is once someone has graduated, it's time to start making payments. You can even enter these programs before um, they're due. But once you get the loan, and it has to be a federal loan, not a private loan, mm. but you call the student loan company and you ask them for an income-based repayment plan. So, And when you call them, you call them when times are down, not when you have a great paying job, mm. because you can get a payment based on your income. We had a client that went from a $600 payment down to a $60 payment. Mm. If you're not making any money, let's say the student's still in school and they don't have an income, that income be, can be zero for the first year. Got Every right. year they're gonna check your credit. This goes for 25 years. At the end of 25 years, they forgive the rest of the loan. That's awesome. It's the, gone. Was that the loan forgiveness program type thing? It's, uh, it's okay. There is other loan forgiveness with okay. student loans. If yeah. you're a teacher who's or a public service worker, there's other forgiveness programs. If you work for a nonprofit for 10 years, you can right. get forgiveness. And sometimes it depends on, they'll give a scale of, of that. We literally don't know what we don't know. But so, I'm going to tell you, please, if, please. if a parent has co-signed a student loan, they do not qualify for income-based repayment. Say that one more time. If, if you're... If you are a parent signs for that student loan, Cosigns, you yeah. cannot get an income-based repayment plan. Mm -hmm. Okay? Parents, I know we all feel like we're obligated to put our kids through college. 
but guess what the college is going to put them in when i my kids went to college i had gone through my financial mess i could not co-sign that it wasn't any good to it and guess what my kids made it anyway mm -hmm. yep. okay so just don't let them do it don't um it's hard to get them off. It's hard to get off the loan once your your child graduates. Also, they want to hold everybody on the hook for these mm -hmm. loans. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, there's student loans out there, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. You know, so much money. Parents stay away from it. Got it. And Diana agrees. Diana said, "Oh, good to know. College is in the near future for my kids." See, this is why it's yes, so Diana, valuable. Yes, Diana. Don't say. And, and what, and by the way, for you guys that are listening, I'll, I'll upload. I mean, obviously, you're gonna have a copy um, on her Facebook now, but I'm gonna upload as the best of Evergreen San Jose show on YouTube, and I'll, I'll send it over to Ruth when it's done. But um, I love Ruth that we seriously helped some people today, gave them yeah. some some value, some some knowledge, and guess what? On YouTube, they can pause rewind uh and do all those things and um and they're going to come to you for more questions as well but um right. i could talk to this woman all day a hundred a hundred uh, an hour and 15 minutes have gone by just like okay. that and if you were listening it probably felt like five uh as well so i want to say thank you thank you no doubt i'm gonna have <laughs> you on again and uh friends with vice mayor ash if you're listening this is the lady who needs to come talk to the next affordability uh housing programs that you guys have been having some meetings i'll forward you some facebook events all right uh, on that because uh there's so many people out there that could use uh your help and, and again this is that emotional you know a subject that doesn't have to be that is totally clarified uh, thank you, Carol. You both look great, and I can. Your best friends. We're done, me. Carol. <laughs> <laughs> no, this this was amazing. I, I want to kind of end, uh, you know, on that. That again, massive action, and you don't know what you don't know. And uh, I'm sitting here with my ego sometimes, and talking to this bright lady for five minutes. There was just things that just blew uh, my mind. So we have to always be open, always be humble to ask for help, and don't be embarrassed in these. Uh, uh, situations uh, on the YouTube I'm gonna um, plug uh, Carol's but for your Bay Areans that are listening and that aren't from North Dakota that don't know it's a, be <laughs> it's a beautiful center here North Milpitas Boulevard 1313 uh, North Milpitas Boulevard and when you walk in really well done uh, you look uh, to your left and you'll see Ruth right away she's in suite 150 and um, Got to got to plug this uh, for her because uh, I know so many people out there right now off the top of my head that could uh, change a life, use their their help, and you know it'd be brilliant. You're like, huh? Life is not that difficult. There's always a way. There's always That's some right. little thing. If there's that, a will. There's a way. Yeah, and it'll literally make you laugh on how silly it was versus how silly you thought it was in your or how big you thought it was in your brain. So we'll end on that. Ruth, say your last name for me. Vanderstein. Vanderstein. Ruth Vanderstein. Nice Roman one. Nahal. Best of Evergreen San Jose show. And and I'll show you how to go back in these comments All to right. answer any uh, questions. Uh, pause, rewind, start from the beginning. Uh, insane, insane value. And thank you so much, Ruth. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Excuse me to fly. <laughs> yeah. We, we wish you guys the best. And... Uh, Peace and love to all you guys. Anything you. you want to do, persistence is everything. Uh, cheers. Let me finish on yours first. So last key that people miss, uh -huh. um, and we're still live here, they can okay. listen, is so yeah, upload, H, uh, it says HD upload says off. We're gonna touch on, which means it'll be really, really clear. Uh -huh. And then before you post it, the last thing, look at this, 34 comes. Uh, when you, by wow. touching this, it's just, it's just gonna save a copy onto your camera roll. Oh, okay. Uh, but you can always go later back onto your Facebook and download it to your laptop if you ever need to or anything. Awesome. So while that finishes, I'm going to hit Oh, so post. here they can see the... From the, from oh, the so, it was over so we there. started off, yeah, the, yeah over you here. you can see the, the uh, staircase. And even after 30 or 40 minutes, it's already up now. But after 30 or 40 minutes, you'll get a little thing that says, oh, your thing is ready. It just means it's improving the quality with every second that passes. But you can oh, nice. play on this anytime All right. uh, like 17 notifications when was the last time you had 17 notifications yeah a long time <laughs> uh so i'm gonna do the same exact thing take care guys